guys, welcome. Today we are going to change a pinata. I know, such a random craft, but it is my daughter's birthday tomorrow. Yes, I said tomorrow, and yes, I'm crafting right before her birthday. We are getting her basketball tickets to her favorite college um, basketball team, the Kentucky Wildcats, and we don't really have anything else to give her, and I'm not a gift card person, I'm not a tickets person or anything else like that. I like to give gifts. That's just what I like to do. So I came up with this random idea to buy a pinata. I am going to deconstruct this and make this look like a basketball with UK University of Kentucky blue and white colors on the sides. I'm going to stuff it with all her favorite candies and some makeup and things like that. Um, and then inside of it is going to be her basketball tickets. So she is going to think that her parents got her pinata for her birthday, but in actuality, what's on the inside is going to be exactly what she wants for her birthday. Okay, so I just got this pinata at Walmart. You know, you probably could plan ahead if you knew exactly what you wanted to do. You could order a basketball pinata. Um, I've been to three different stores here in Myrtle Beach and I could not find a basketball pinata. So I'm making one. Um, this, it's pretty large, pretty large pinata was $20, roughly $20 at Walmart. So we got one of these. Um, I'm just going to take everything off of it. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. I have got some streamers, some orange streamer for a basketball and then blue and white for the University of Kentucky Wildcat um, colors. I did not get black because I think what I'm going to do is just cut out pieces of paper, um, maybe with my Cricut, maybe just hand cut, or maybe I'm just going to draw them um, on. So no need for crepe paper on that. So this is just the crepe paper that you get. Um, you could also do this with tissue paper, but I've done a few pinatas before. Crepe paper is the easiest way to go. And then for the circle, I just have a really big mixing bowl that I have at my house that I'm going to trace. Um, a few sheets of 12 by 12 paper. Um, for a pinata, it is double sided. So I think what I'm going to do is a like one on one side, one on the other. Big old basketball. Glue, pen, and scissors. That is all you need. Okay, let's get started. Okay, what you want to do is start by getting the outside crepe paper that you chose for your colors, just like this. We're going to do a whole bunch of blue and white all the way around. You want to do long enough strips to where they'll wrap from all the way up here and then just have a little bit hung on each side. You will fix these later, but for right now, you just need it long enough to wrap around both sides and you need a whole bunch of them. Take your paper and cut long strips. Then when you have a bunch, stack them on top of each other and cut fringe. This would be easier if you had fringe cut scissors. I didn't have those on hand. So all you do is just cut a whole bunch of little slits in it, about three quarters or a half way through. Do not go to the do not go all the way through. Otherwise that you'll have a whole bunch of spare pieces of paper laying around. This next part is a lot of fun. You just take a little bit of glue. You don't need a whole lot for crepe paper and you kind of layer the crepe paper. I'm using the blue and white. So I'm doing it every other one, blue, white, blue, white and layering it and kind of offsetting them to where you create that fringe and you just keep working around the entire outside of your pinata. When you get to the flap that you're going to be inserting your treats and stuff too, which is right here. You want to trim the excess or the overhang so you, you don't want to glue this shut. So I am going to just take my scissors and I'm going to trim the excess off. So when we go to seal up the sides in the front, I won't accidentally seal up my flap. There we go. So now we need to add in the flap. Let's see here. What is going on right here? I had some of it fall.
Okay, there we go. So now when you flap it open, it will flap open. Okay, so now for the tricky part. Now that you've gotten all your sides done, lay this down one way. It's fine. It's no big deal if it kind of crushes. Just lightly set it down. You want to take your brush for your glue. Where your flap is at, you've already trimmed the edges off, so you don't have to glue right there. But just take, take your glue, kind of go around and flatten these out. Lay them out flat. Not all of them have to stick because you are going to lay more crepe paper on top of this. But just take a bead of glue. Crepe paper you don't need a whole lot of glue to and it, because it's very thin it will pick it will hold the glue up really well. But you just want to lay a bead of glue down and kind of wrap this around, fold this around your pinata. This basketball that I want to create is about the size, it's going to be the size of this. When I put this right here, it covers pretty much the entire front facing of the pinata. That's exactly what I want. So I just grabbed this mixing bowl that I have at my house. Now we'll put that to the side. Okay. So for that, I just have 12 by 12 cardstock. I conveniently had orange. Um, you don't have to do orange if you don't want to be any color because you're going to cover it up. I do suggest though however to do at least some like color. I would not do black because I don't have any black on my pinata. All I'm doing is just taking some double-sided tape and I'm going to stick these pieces of orange together. does not have to be perfect by any means because we are just going to trace the bowl and cut it out. But at least we'll have a very good idea of what size we need to make the basketball and make sure that it's perfectly round. Okay. And again, this, you don't have to go crazy and do it perfect because it's going to get covered up by crepe paper anyways. There's one and then there's two. I think because my pinata is double sided, you don't have to do this stuff. If you want to stop and only do one side, you totally can. Um, I am going to do both sides. So I'm going to do this twice. Okie dokie. So now what you want to do is take your bowl and a pen, just place it on there. Trace your circular object. And we're gonna do it twice, because I'm doing it on both sides. That's all you need this bowl for. Now I am left with a circle and pen. Just take your scissors and cut that circle out. If you lay this, now this is not a finished circle by any means, but if you lay this down like this, the portions that need to be really pretty and perfect are going to be where your ball is not touching at all. So, taking your crepe paper, and you're going to want to do this one line at a time, taking your crepe paper, and we're going to make it as long as your box. So if your box is like that, we want to make it just a little bit longer because we are going to trim it.
make your fringe. You want to start at the bottom and work your way to the top. So take a bead of glue down here. the very bottom, take your piece of crepe paper and lay it down right to the very edge of your pinata. And then repeat the steps that you did for the sides, just going in that same pattern order that we had. So same concept like with your um, with the with the actual pinata itself. You're taking a form right here. This is our form. This is what we're going to be gluing the crepe paper onto. And I am going to open this up, unravel it, and do long strips of crepe paper just like I have been doing. Um, the other one was we were doing was black and white stripes. This is just going to be all one color all the way down your form. And this is your this is your form. It is flimsy, which is fine because we're going to glue it on top of our pinata. So you doesn't does it need to be like a thick cardboard or anything else like that. But essentially all you're doing is the same thing you did with the outside of your pinata is you're cutting a whole bunch of strips, fringe cutting it, gluing it down onto the um, onto the circle. When we get done doing that, I will show you the next step. form back over. This is the side that I already did. You can, what you can do is just take your glue make sure you have a fair enough amount of glue. Looks like I had missed Make sure you have a fair enough amount of glue on everything. You definitely want the basketball to be sucked down. Okay. And flip this over. Okay, the, my fringe is coming from here down. It's falling downwards. You wanna make sure that your basketball is doing the same thing and lay that down, center it on your piece. Some of my basketball fringe did not get glued down very well, so I'm just gonna go back in. Once it dries, you can't tell that it was wet with glue, but make sure that like your pieces of fringe for your basketball are glued down. It's probably important as to why you should choose a back color being the same color as your paper. That way you don't have if you do have paper showing, it's not going to be this annoying different color than what your crepe paper is. Okay, let this dry all the way before you start fluffing it up and making it look super cute. Right now it doesn't look all that cute, but just let it dry all the way. And then when we are done, we can fluff it up. Don't do that part now. So we have one done. When we turn it around, this is still empty. Same thing we did with the front side, we're gonna do with the back side. Okay, I went up to my office to grab a couple pieces of string, different types of strings. I have a very thin one 
and then a thicker black one. The thicker black one though is kind of like a, a mesh. And I don't think I like that very much. And the thinner black should do. It's pretty pliable. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's definitely a lot better than the see-through mesh. So that's, this is what I'm going to use. Okay, so I've decided this is kind of lightly fluff the orange. It's okay if you over fluff because then you can set it down. See how there's like a little bit coming up right here. We'll just glue that down. You just kind of want to make, make it come alive is essentially what you're trying to do. And it's okay because if you see a little bit of that, we'll just push it down. Okay. Kind of want to dirty it up, mess it up a little bit so it's not perfect. And then when you're done messing it up, kind of lay it down flat. <laughs> I know, silly, silly. But at least now it's not laying flat. Like this has zero movement to it and it's very flat. But then now, right now, if you can see it, this one, it kind of looks messy and it looks like it's supposed to be a pinata. That's the look that you want. But you don't want it too messy. So just kind of scrub it up a little bit and then lay it down flat. Okay, so I got a picture of one. Looks like it goes from end to end, ouch, stab my finger. Okay, it goes from end to end. I'm gonna lay my ribbon flat and I'm gonna take my glue and I'm just going to do a bead of glue down the middle of the ribbon. This is probably where it would be good if you had a fine tipped needle glue, just so you're not making a mess everywhere. Okay, lift it up. Looks like on the basketball, it's in the middle of the basketball. We got this all weird now. Okay, goes in the middle of the basketball and then, so what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna lay it flat on the basketball like that, but then I'm going to like lift up on the middle and just kind of bring it up a little bit because that's what the picture looks like. Picture looks like it's going up. And then, now the lines aren't going to be perfect, but at least there's lines. Because right now, like, my son was just in here, he said it looks like a sun. And we don't want it to look like a sun, we want it to look like a basketball. Okay, so then I'm going to trim the excess off. It was as I just lightly pressed the thin black ribbon down. I did not want it completely straight because in the picture it looks like it's a little bit curved up a little bit. So that's how I want to do the middle line. Then it seems like there is one that goes from top to bottom with kind of a left curve. It doesn't go straight down the middle. So again, just taking a long piece of string, pushing this out of the way. Is this long enough? Yes, it is. Woo! Did not seem long enough. Okay, doing the same thing, just taking a small little bead of glue and just putting it all the way down your ribbon. Okay. Bring your form back and it's going to go straight down the middle. It looks like from end to end it goes straight down the middle and then there's like a little bow which is exactly what we had for the very for the middle one. Oh, it's taking forever for me to grab that. Okay, so I am just going to put end to end straight down the middle and then pick up the middle and kind of move it. And give it a little bit of wiggle room like that. And then when I kind of have its shape the way I want to, just press it down onto the crepe paper. Don't manhandle it too much because it is wet. You want it to dry onto your crepe paper. 
but you do want to make sure and just trim off the edges so it doesn't glue onto the outside of the ball. So we have this. Now it has two ones that go inwards like this. So just grab some more string. I had originally cut some and actually this might work. Okay, actually scratch that. It originally cut some and it seems to be long enough and they're gonna go inwards like this towards the middle. So doing another little bit of glue. Okay. And it's like quarter to quarter. Ooh. Going from here to here. And we just kind of want to, again, move it around a little bit. Of course, it is not going to be perfect. We are putting ribbon on to crepe paper and it's all kind of moving and thin. But once you get it all put together, it's going to look perfect, I promise. Okay. I love the look of this. Oh yeah, I love the look of this. Oh my gosh, love it. Okay, now to do the other side. I'm telling y'all, this looks freaking phenomenal, phenomenal. I love it. Okay, doing the same process. It looks like it's the same type of shape on the picture that I'm looking at. So we'll go kind of try and match it up just a little bit to what you have on the other side. And then just kind of drag it over. Oh my word. If you don't agree, don't leave a, don't leave a comment that you don't agree because I think it looks so good. Okay, okay, look at that, trimming off the excess. Okay, again with the manhandling, you don't really want to manhandle it too much because it's still drying. Your ribbon is still drying. So while this dries, let's see, I'm going to push it down just a little bit to make sure it's really good on there. It doesn't take much for ribbon to dry, especially because we didn't put a whole lot of glue on there. And the glue that I'm using is Elmer's glue. This stuff, it dries so quick, so quick. Um, it, Elmer's glue is the same stuff I use when I make my party decorations. I use Elmer's glue and then this needle nose thing. Everything that I got, I got from my office. Um, okay. Oh, so stinking cute. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Is my 16 year old, soon to be 16 year old gonna love it? She absolutely is. <laughs> so that's all that matters. Okay, flip it off to the other side and repeating the process. Try not to move your form around too much because you do have stuff that ribbon is drying on the other side. Okay, now that we are completely done. Ooh, I dragged it. Dragged it across the counter. Hopefully it did not squirt, it did not mess up. Okay, now that you have everything glued down the way that you want to, oh no, it looks fabulous. Okay, now just go in, same thing that you did with the orange, and kind of fluff it up a little bit around. Just kind of want to give it some movement like a normal pinata. Not too much movement. This is like where if you have missing holes, and things of that nature, now is the time that you'll be able to tell if you have missing holes. Same thing for up here. Kind of give it some movement. It is a pinata. A little bit of movement. We don't want to give too much movement to the uh, ribbon. But just fluff it up just a little bit. 
go to this side. Be careful because if you're doing this right away like I am, because I have zero patience. Crafts, if I have to wait for something to dry for a long time, it is not in my, that's not what I'm interested in. <laughs> so be careful on the wet spots. If it's still wet, don't fluff. But there we go. We have a done pinata. Now the very top, I probably need to add a little bit right here because it's really flat, but it's fine. At the very top right here is where the flap is. You can still open that up. And that's where I'm going to put all of her stuff. But otherwise that, this is a done pinata.